Ladies and gentlemen, hope this message finds you well. Hope this transmission finds you well. The man in blue is telling you to get ready. Hold on to your seats. Logic user guide and tutorial. Here we go. Okay, okay, it's that time again, YouTube, Eddie Gray, with resources for the modern creative, brought to you by hfmusicacademy.com. We are in the house, we're ready to get into Logic Pro User Guide. This tutorial is going to cover all the basics and some of the advanced features of Logic Pro. We're doing it in such a way where we're digesting the information so it's not overwhelming so it's succinct in a comprehensive program to help you become a logic pro power user i am your host eddie gray at your service just ready to really get into the details that's what i'm about that's why i'm here and i'm so excited about the opportunity so with that being said let's get into the logic user guide and tutorial here we go all right, my good friends, we are gonna tap right in, I'm gonna go deep, we're going hard, and um, let's start with muting. We know that inside of Logic, we can mute and solo, but for those of you that are Logic users, you know how complicated sometimes the rules can be. In other words, if I do A, B happens, and if I do B happens, C happens, but A doesn't. So we're gonna go over all these details together. All right, let's go ahead and zone in a little bit. You can mute one or more regions in the tracks area to exclude them from playback. Now remember that regions are different than tracks. So just to be clear about how this works, we can have regions, many regions in a track, but essentially there's only one track that can contain various regions. Now, of course, we can have various tracks inside of one Logic Pro session. To add to that, if you've been watching the series, you know that we can have two Logic sessions opened up simultaneously, and you can drag and drop material to and fro. You can also solo individual regions. The same laws apply. Why would you do this? Well, you could hear them in isolation, and you can also lock the solo status of regions. So look out for this phrase, my good friends, where we're locking in or solo locking various tracks and regions let's get into muting individual regions we can hit the keyboard modifier control m we can also use the appropriate tool and then of course because logic always gives you 50 different ways to solve a problem we know that the region inspector will allow us to mute as well so let's look at those rather quickly shall we we're back in logic i'm checking sound just to make sure that our ears are good and accounted for. All right, so normally I would never raise down the volume of the stereo or the master, but uh, in this case, we're just doing a quick se session. And so I just wanna make sure that this always, when you're working, is at zero. And so in order to send that back to its original value, I just option clicked it. All right, but for now, we're gonna just bring this down. Okay, so we're looking at a session here and I've bounced everything to audio just to make this a little bit of an easier process. But in most music sessions, you really look more like this, wouldn't you say? You've got one region here, one region here contained within the track itself. So track 10 has two regions. Well, we can also have another track that has, let's say, three regions let's just pretend that this uh oh that's cool we were trying to do this yesterday that's so funny we were trying to use this tool yesterday wow it's always something and now it's resizing up yeah that, that's incredible we were literally trying to use this tool that allows you to kind of resize um uh regions that are you know um, in close proximity and I, it's it's literally working now where it wasn't working yesterday so you got to love it I think sometimes just logic has its days. 
But going back to my, my main point here, I can have three regions, one, two, and why don't I delete the rest of these so this is very easy to understand. So I've got this one here, which is in focus. See, one, two, and three inside of one track. All right, let's Command Z that. And uh, well, let's say we wanna mute some of them. Again, we can Control M. You can see the region has been grayed out. This tells us that it's not going to play. It will not play. Even though the track itself is not muted, you can see that it's in the clear. The track will play, but this individual region will not. Okay, I can hit mute. The behavior changes. The entire track has been grayed out. Now, these regions are not necessarily muted. And how do I know that? There's a small circle right there that's an indication it's filled out color red because my track is the color red if i were to change the color of this to green well what do you know it turns green okay so let's take this back to red and then uh we also found out that inside of the region inspector we can also mute a region this way we know that region inspector is responsible for the individual regions. So for example, this one and that one and that one, right? And so if you wanna make a decision on a track basis, you would not use the region inspector. In fact, you would close it. You would use the track inspector right here, okay? All right, let's Command Z some of that, bring it back home. All right, good. I think it's always important to kind of go back to the beginning uh, and get that, that default view again. All right, so we know how to mute individual regions. They appear gray in the tracks area for easy identification. We can also unmute those same regions by performing the same key, uh, key commands or otherwise. So for example, if this one was muted by hitting control N, well, we could go into the region inspector and we can just hit mute and that'll solve that for us. Now, bear in mind for those of you that really wanna geek out with logic, if you go to window, show region inspector float, you could also literally just hover over the region inspector. You'll see that the tool converts to the hand tool. I could just drag this out and create a region inspector floating window. So I don't have to hover all the way back over to the channel strip inspector. Everything is right there where I need it to be. Now I've got this set up to a key command. So that's another way of going about it. But just to be clear, you can find that in Window, Show Region, Inspector Float. And again, I have mine set up as F5. So if I hit the key command, it pops up every time. Let's say I get rid of it for whatever reason, perform some other function, the F5 brings it right back. Let's say I move it over here, perform some functions. Uh, you can see I just keep recalling it back and forth. So that's a nice little workflow. How do I set key commands? Option K will help you out in that regard. All right, what else we got? Um, let's solo. Okay, so then now we're no longer muting, we're soloing the regions. So not the track, but the regions. I just want that to be 100% clear. When you do this, the region will play in isolation from the pointer position until you release the mouse button. So this is uh, a function that you can access by using the solo tool. So let's go ahead and try that out. It also says here that you can solo multiple regions by clicking them, then clicking and holding one of the selected regions with the solo tool. Playback starts from the position of the pointer until you release the mouse button. Okay, so you see all these red tracks, these are drum tracks. And so then what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna access the solo tool. How do I do that? Well, we know we can go to the primary and secondary tool here and change it that way. But I'm gonna do it differently this time. I'm gonna hit T, okay, T like Tom, and then I'm gonna go ahead and select the solo tool. Key command Shift S inside of the tool menu. Now then, these um, regions are still all kind of in this regular playback mode, but as soon as I select them, I want you to see uh, what happens here. Okay, so I selected them first. Everything still looks like it's normal, but as soon as I click and hold track pad or mouse, this is what happens. So 
So now we're just listening to the drums. This is a great mixing technique. Could be a great arrangement technique. Pre-production, good for post-production. Just a good thing to have in your arsenal. I'm going to go ahead and hit TT. Brings me back to my default state. Now, there's another function up here. Just want to make sure that we can distinguish the difference between these two. Okay, now this is solo mode as opposed to the solo tool. All right, and functionality is similar, but this time you'll notice that everything is grayed out. And the only reason I'm telling you this right now, I don't know if it's in the manual or not, but this is a big area of confusion for a lot of new users. They'll say, I don't know what's going on. Everything is grayed out. The, tr the tracks don't have any mute indications. There's no indication of any solo inside the mixer. What is going on? And I'll usually say, well, can we look up the control bar? And, uh, you know, if you customize the control bar, we can actually set this up in such a way where we can see solo in the modes and functions tab. And then finally, you'll see that it's on. Another key indicator, just really quick, I'm, 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 I'm trying to give you the best advice to make sure there's no potholes and you're not in quicksand. So if we look at the LCD screen, look, what color is it? What color is it? Yellow. That tells me right there that this is a, an issue with soloing a track. Let me give you some uh, more proof. If I solo track number 10, what happens to the LCD? Good. If I use the solo tool as we did a second ago, what happens to the LCD? You guys see my point, okay? So this has to do with soloing. Every time the LCD changes to the color yellow, we know for a fact something is soloed. So for those of you that are mixing and maybe just by mistake, you just soloed something in the mixer, but you can't tell who, what, where, when, why, how, just look at the mixer itself and look at the LCD screen, and that should be a, a pretty clear indication of what you need to do. All right, let's keep moving here. We're now going into, uh, yeah, we talked about that as well, locking the solo status of regions. So let's see here. If you want to solo while the project is playing, you can shift-click additional regions to hear them. When you're finished, let me just make sure I got everything using the solo tool. Good. All right, so now it says here, uh, to option click the solo button in the control bar and this is going to do it's going to kind of act a little bit different so let's go ahead and check this out option click here okay so what's the difference if we just click well it looks like it gets into a new mode so we have solo mode and then there's solo lock mode so let's look at the differences it says here select the region you want to solo Selecting regions while the project plays does not affect their solo status. When you're finished, click the solo button or press S again. Okay. Uh, more instructions. Muted tracks and regions appear slightly differently in the tracks area depending on how they are muted. When a track is muted using its mute button, the region on the tracks are gray. But let's look at these a little bit after. I just want to look at the solo status of regions. In Logic Pro Option, click the solo button uh, and let's see what this acts like. All right, we'll click that. And so then now um, we can see that this, that was weird. Um, everything has been muted because this is in solo lock mode. If I were to uh, solo something, you'll see that nothing will change because this thing is locked. Um, to give you another example, if I were to mute the pianos um you can see that one of them is highlighted the other ones aren't so every time i select something now it's um it's it's only showing me that which is being soloed so in this case only these three tracks because they are soloed but you can see track six is not highlighted track seven eight nine so on and so forth so this to me is a little confusing because why would you want it that way? I can see this behavior where you're just selecting a track and you're listening back to it or, you know, we select this region and we hear that back. But uh, this idea of solo locking, um, yeah, it's just, just really interesting, like why you would want this behavior. So hopefully we get some, some more indications as to the, as to the why. Uh, behind this solo 
lock. Like now I'm selecting these and they're not even working. So let's uh let's look a little bit further and try and figure out exactly how this works. Uh, my estimation is basically, you know, everything is muted. And as soon as you click something, now we're able to listen to it. Um, but let's keep, let's keep looking. Let's keep digging around here. All right. So um, when you're finished, let's talk about these muted contingencies. When a track is muted using its mute button, the regions on the tracks are gray, but the region names are in color. Okay. So... Let's pretend I have this going. And what this is saying is the regions itself are gray, but the names are in color. So this is saying that um, the track is muted, but the regions are not. When a track is turned off using its on and off button, both the regions and the track and the regions are, are, are gray. So for example, if we actually turn off this track, this is the off button in the track header inside of every track. So then now we can see that the name itself, uh, why don't I zoom in a little tighter? The, the name itself is dimmed and the region is dimmed. Whereas when the track was on, we could see, if I change the behavior of this, uh, hold on, um, that the, tr the the track or the region is dimmed gray but the name itself is still in in color right and so that gives us an indication that it's we're in some kind of solo mode and the region is not necessarily muted but the track is so again if i hit mute uh in fact let me choose another color like let me choose this one okay so track number six guys the track is muted but the region is not Okay, because the the color is still there. We can see we can see zero seven bells, right, in stereo, um, or at least that's the way it was imported. And then I'll hit Control M, and then now this tells me this gives me more information. It says, hey, the region is muted, but because of that little ball there, and again it's still colored. This gives me some more information. It says that the region itself is muted, right there. Okay, let's get back. When an individual region is muted, the region and its name are gray and a small colored dot precedes the name, just like I showed you, okay? There's a difference in muting the track, muting the region. Lastly, when a track is muted because another track is soloed, the regions on the track are gray, but the region names are in color. Okay, so track is gonna be muted because another track is soloed. And we'll just we'll stick to our example right here. This piano track is going to be soloed, but this track number six and every other track for that matter uh, is dimmed. The regions are dimmed out, okay? But but uh, I'm sorry, the tracks are dimmed out, but the regions itself, are they're still alive. And something else that we should look at, to me, the key indicator is this flashing M icon, right? I've seen this in so many chats and so many different um, conversations all over, like, you know, what is this flashing M all about? And all it simply means is that something in your track has been soloed. And so it's just giving you an indication that, you know, if you turn that off, then you're, you're, you're back in action. Now, something else I want to throw out there real quick is sometimes in the mixer, you'll mute something without knowing and it'll affect, uh, the rest of your track. Like, uh, let me see if I could just show you, like I'll solo this yeah, so this is a, an auxiliary track, bus 80, and we don't see anything in the tracks area. Look how, I'm going to hit Z to get kind of a, a bigger view. Um, oh, wait a minute, this one's on. Do I have any auxes? No, I don't have any auxes. Let me do that really quick. Bus 1, let's pretend that this is all set up, uh, and I solo this by mistake. You can see it's like, well, wait, what? what track is solo and I don't see any and then look there's like a special rule kind of going on with track number seven so I encourage you if you're new or you're seasoned and you're just looking to refine the craft open up the mixer look around go into the not the single not the tracks but the all tab inside of the mixer there's almost like three kinds of mixers and just see if you've soloed anything because it's very possible that you have and so then now when we take that out of solo mode, 
were in the clear. Now, something that we should look at is this track number seven. Looks like it has some kind of special behavior around it. Um, so, so yeah, that, let's uh, let's kind of take note of that and see what is all that about. And it's obviously tied to this thing that we did earlier when we were selecting it. So if I go out of solo mode and I solo, it's it's still in this kind of solo mode. So we have to figure out what this is about. Um, so yeah, we'll get to it. Let me just solo this one more time. All right. So here we go. Time stretching regions in the Logic Pro tracks area. All right, so now we're talking about literally changing the length of the regions, but not just to resize, but to time stretch. So when you resize, the position of notes and other events in the regions does not change. Alternatively, you can time stretch regions to shorten or lengthen the relative distance between events in the regions. Expanding regions increase the distance, the amount of time between events in the regions while compressing regions decreases, hence making them play or perform faster. You can make a region play in half time by stretching it to twice its size. So if it's a bar and you stretch it out to two, it's going to play in half time. Or you could have it play double time by doing the opposite. You can also time stretch individual notes, chords, and other items in the audio regions using flex time. Cool. I'm going to highlight that. Um, so I'll just show you a quick demo and then we'll get into some of the details. Uh, let's see. I have a... Where are my congas? I think they're right here. Let's check this out. And this is actually a good usage of this solo button here. Um, actually, congas are right here. Okay. So you see what I'm doing? I'm selecting solo mode. Clicked on one of the tracks so I can isolate it without having to go to the tracks itself, right? I'm not, I'm not using the tracks. I'm just kind of using this function. Hit shift spacebar to play from this selection. Okay, so let me go ahead and cut everything I don't need for now. Um, I'll just resize this. Um, and actually, wait a minute. I can probably use the key command that we learned yesterday. What was it? Shift... Um, ah, man, it was, a, it was a good one. It was like shift backslash or shift bracket. Ah, it was something like that. It, it would bring this over. I'll have to think about that later. But uh, we're here. We click on this region. Um, and now I'm going to resize it. So the length, as you can see, if we zone in a little bit here, 8000, meaning eight bars. So just bring this into four and it'll play. You have to hold option, right? Because it's not a length change, it's a stretch, or in this case, a compression. And then now listen to this. Um, let's do that one more time over. Hold on. It looks like it didn't really do it. Hold on. Uh, Command Z. Okay. Hold option. All right, looks like it's good there. Oh. The application obviously wouldn't necessarily apply. It sounds kind of animated and crazy, but that's the idea. If you wanted to take something, kind of stretch it out a little bit, you certainly can. Uh, and when it does work, it's pretty sweet. Um, this is a Latin song, so I don't know how much it would translate, but um, let, let me just hear this really quick. Okay, so for the example of this uh, piano here, right? Maybe we could take it and uh, we can stretch it out double time. So 16. All right, let's hear this part now just by itself. Okay, let's see what that would sound like. Now it's probably a little experimental. Let's try it. It's not bad to be honest kind of cool okay um so there's a lot of power there we can also stretch out notes and chords 
Unfortunately, I don't have any MIDI here. I bounce everything to audio, but um, and you know, by way of example, with these uh, these MIDI lines, you can actually stretch these out if you wanted to. Um, but yeah, that's we can go over that later. Okay, so uh, what else we got? Time stretching MIDI regions. You can option drag left or right. The events within the MIDI are stretched or compressed. Um, yeah, so again, this won't be musically. Uh, it won't, maybe I'll do it with something third, just really quick so this would make musical sense. You guys have heard this loop many a times before. And so if I isolate this, uh, let's listen to it. Okay, so then now I'm going to hover over the bottom right or left. Click and hold, that's a length change. If I hold option, that's a stretch. And we'll do this two times over. Originally it was two bars, now it's four. And let's listen. Let's do eight. Let's see what happens if we go to eight. So this is four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, here we go. All right, so again, not sure if that would make musical sense, but th those are some possibilities. And I have a great video on the YouTube channel. Consider subbing. Uh, we got some great content on here where I actually show you direct examples of how you would apply this. And um, musically, they translate quite well, so you might want to check that out. Uh, it's called like stretching and compressing uh, in Logic Pro or something like that. All right, so we now know we can time stretch MIDI. And uh, what about audio? It would be the same exact process I actually just showed you earlier. Um, it says the action stretches or compresses the audio by the amount that the region is altered in length. So it's just math, right? If you do two and you stretch it out to four, half time. If you do two, you stretch it out to one. That's right. And replaces the original region with a new PCM audio file in the original file format or AIFF if the original was not PCM. So when you do this, it's actually going to create a new track. That's kind of the beauty of it. Um, the original still exists. You'll just have a new track. Can we corroborate this? would be really cool. I always like to um, see it in action. So uh, if I hit T, Shift T, and I rename this specific region, and I call it Test uh, 22, just for fun, and um, I'll close the browser, hit F like Frank, go into the project bin. Let me clean everything up so we're not confused. Shift U gives me all of the unused files. If you want to know where I got that from, inside of the edit tab in Project Bin. Okay, so then now I've selected all the unused audio files. I'm going to delete them, and uh, I'll just do that. Okay, so then now I have this test file, which is right here, test 22. And then I'm going to compress it using the same technique. All right, sweet. And 22.1. So we, we have test which is right that's 22.1 yeah here it is right here so the original was right there uh let me point it ah hold on let me point this out for you uh right there you can see the name test 22.1 and then of course because we started playing with it there's the other one right there so that's pretty cool me a command z all right, and then there's our test file right there. And actually, something I want to, I'm going to hit Shift Command Z. Can I redo what we just did? Oh, there it is right there. Okay. Um, so there's test 22, the original. And then here's the new file here. So just wanted to make that correction because I just saw that um, it was kind of building on itself, right? Like here's the compressed file. Here's the one that we renamed. And then here's the original. So Command Z, there it is right there. Okay. Let me command Z that as well. So this is what's happening in the background. It's kind of nice to know. I will say um, it's been a game changer. Sometimes I'll lose the file and um, I'm like, man, what am I going to do? You know, how am I going to solve this? You know, maybe I didn't save the proper project alternative. And the good old project bin has gotten me out of a lot of, you know, interesting situations. So uh, it's good to know. All right, where are we? So we've time stretched. Let's uh, choose an audio time stretching algorithm. So it looks like we have some tools here that can help us out. There's universal. 
complex percussive version five wow cool i didn't even know about that uh any material monophonic pads rhythm material okay so let's go ahead and get into this we're gonna go into edit time stretch time stretching algorithm so let's do something that we'll hear right away why don't we go with the beat let me find that um let's see I'm assuming not that one So just for the sake of this example, I'm going to do the congas here or the percussion. Yeah. All right, let's rename this. I'm going to click on track 18, shift, return, congas. Okay, so uh, I'm going to cut the, the like what I don't need. And actually, going back to last lesson, I'm trying to apply some of the stuff that we learned last time so you can see the kind of user um application so i'm going to click here and then there's some kind of trim you can go to edit trim let's see here crop outside locators all right let's go ahead and, and even oh there it is remove overlaps that's what i was trying to do last time so let me get this one and then this one next let's try remove overlap first oh no it wasn't that one so maybe it's this one wait why is that doing that there we go. All right. So I used command and was that backslash. So we went to edit trim and I used this one crop outside the locators. So everything outside of the left and right locator was trimmed out. So this is what it looked like before. And I wanted to make this quick command backslash boom. Okay. So we're looking at this. We go into, oh, there you go. We go into edit. We go into time stretch. All right, time stretch algorithm. So looks like we have universal, complex, percussive, and then we have a couple other ones. Logic 5, any material, monophonic, pads, rhythmic, beats only. These are congas, so I'm assuming beats only, rhythmic, any material, and then, of course, some of these. But let's, uh, let's find out what they do and what their application is. So for universal... This high quality algorithm is able to handle any kind of audio material as recommended for most time stretching tasks. Okay, so that's good to know. This is kind of the the standard. So we'll just go ahead and highlight that. It's all by default. The other two algorithms can sometimes deliver better results when the audio material exactly matches the outline specifications. So these algorithms can help you with stretching material out. Now I'm really curious to hear the piano and if it would have sounded better if I used something else. Uh, complex chooses this algorithm to obtain natural sounding results when time stretching complex musical material orchestral music or final mixes very good right didn't know that love it so this is particularly useful for anybody that samples if you don't sample i'm not saying you're never going to use this but i could completely see somebody uh, a remixer somebody who heavily uses samples this could be a game changer for you Reminds me of Ableton's algorithms, um, but obviously a little bit more hidden. Percussive perfectly maintains the timing of rhythmic material, making it a good choice for drum loops and percussive, non-harmonic, non-tonal, I would assume, signals. In comparison to the beats-only algorithm, the percussive algorithm is better suited for percussive material that has been processed through a reverb or contains a long tail. Wow. That's detailed, right? Like, if your percussion has reverb, you should use this one. This may also apply to percussive playing styles, such as staccato electric piano. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Uh, or clavinet parts. That's probably worth highlighting. Only Beats only may be the better alternative for dry drum recordings. Okay. So they're just letting you know, if you have something that's dry, that isn't wet, use uh, this algorithm. Otherwise, if you're using dry drum recordings and i don't think they mean just like organic drum kits but beats and samples then you want to use this 
Okay. Version 5. This algorithm can be used on most types of audio. It imparts a particular color, which may be a useful creative option. So we're going to check all these out. I feel like it's, it's you know, I wasn't planning on covering all this, um, but it, I think it's worth it. Any material can handle most types of audio material. And then monophonic, we're thinking bass, individual voices, individual brass, individual woodmen, wood, wood, woodwinds, rather. Pads used on polyphonic material with harmonic content. Choirs or string sections are good. All right, that's a good one to think about. Rhythmic material, per drums, percussion, less obviously rhythm, guitar, clavinet, and piano compart, uh, but less obviously <laughs> rhythm, guitar, clav. Okay. Um, I think it just means um, parts that are not overly percussive that's worded a little bit strange but that are just you know rhythmic but not necessarily overly percussive not a lot of transients i'm assuming beats only perfectly maintains the timing of percussive material this algorithm should be your first choice for any kind of dry drum loops going back to the beginning uh is this it with it yeah okay so let's go ahead and test these out i feel like it really is worth our time uh i'll start off by moving the congas right next to the piano because these are the two that I'm going to be using them on. And I will solo both of these, hold option, two finger gesture so I can better maneuver the screen. And we're gonna use this technique now. Now I know I wanna cut the, uh, the fat of these, so I'm gonna hit Control X. Let's remove silence from audio region. So I'm just throwing out some other stuff for some of my my logic people out there, and all I'm doing is I'm changing the threshold. See all these little lines? So rather than me making an audio edit, it's going to do it for me. So I'm going to hit OK. Just did it for this region right here, my good friends. Now we're going to do it for the other uh, region, which is right here. It looks like actually it's already been edited. So yeah, we're good. OK, so let's listen to the piano one more time. In fact, let me go ahead and use this solo tool. Okay, select that. Shift spacebar, play from selection. Okay, let's bring that back to normal, right? We, we did that time stretch. So I'm going to hold option. This becomes a stretch. It was originally, was it four? Jeez, I hope I remember. Hold on, let me just check something really quick. Um, if not, I'll use this one. It looks like it's a straight, yeah, 14. Mm, that should be eight or 16. I wonder why it's like that. Let me just listen to this, and if not, we'll just, we'll carry on. No, 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 now it's in a weird time signature. Okay, so we're listening to this piano right here. We go into edit, we go into time stretch, and I don't want to use universal. I want to try something like complex percussive and see if there's any difference whatsoever. All right, so now we have this complex uh, material that's selected for us. I'm curious if there's anything inside of the region inspector that changes. No. Anything in the track inspector? No. But I will go ahead and um, change this to, let's just do, uh, oh, you know what? I'm going to change one setting really quick do you know how um sometimes you click and hold on a track and you're trying to figure out its length you can see the length of this one is 16 bars right but that's not good to do because if i duplicate 16 bars with 191 ticks uh, let me zoom in tighter so you can see what i mean hopefully you're seeing that so you see the 191 at the very end that's like bad news because it means that this is not a perfect number it's not a perfect integer so um, you either want to try and do the dirty work and chop off anything that may be at the end of a signal, like there is something there. Uh, use the marquee tool to chop it up. Now, when I look, now I'm at 15.33.225, which is okay. But um, I'm going to go ahead and control shift, bring this over. See what I'm doing? I'm just resizing to get the perfect 16. Right. If we're going to do these exercises, we want to make sure that we have the right information in front of us. All right. So I'm going to S. This is now soloed. Remember, 
that we changed the algorithm, the time stretching algorithm too complex. I'm sure there's key commands that you can utilize as well. All right, so if I'm at 16 bars, or I was, geez, look at this, hold on. Um, another way that, that I believe we can fix this without it being such uh, drudgery is by choosing absolute value. So let me go ahead and just try that. Uh, again, this isn't in the manual so far as I've seen. If we choose absolute value, I believe that it should just give us the perfect, no, it's still doing it. Um, so yeah, that's something that you're going to have to kind of work through uh, when editing audio regions. And I don't know if it if you're affected by the, f the fact that you're using an algorithm or not. But anyway, let's bring it in really quick. Um, and I may have a hack for this as well that I'm thinking about. But let me bring this in. So let's pretend this says 16 and we'll bring it down to 8 right there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Let's listen to this. All right, good, good. So that sounds pretty good to me. Um, I'll see if there's a, a, any difference in terms of its feel, but let me show you this hack really quick. Um, I've noticed sometimes it may or may not work, but if I click here and I bounce this track to audio, I want to see if that same behavior happens on this track right here. So I'm going to go to the bottom right and it's still happening. It's, um, it's really interesting, isn't it? It just kind of feels like a bug or something. All right, so there's the tail end. I'm going to chop it off. All right, let's see if this continues to happen. I'm going to hold. Yeah, it's still, still happening. So these are just things that we have to learn how to navigate um, and, and you have to be on top of. I'm sure this is unique to this session. I don't think this will happen to you. But just to be clear, I'm, I'm clicking, I'm holding, and the length of this specific region needs to be 16 bars. But that is not happening. And so we're, you know, having to kind of continuously readjust. I'll adjust to 16 bars. I let go. And then when I come back to check, you can see that it's off. So um, it's, it's just an interesting prospect. You know, maybe another thing that I'll do is I'll create a marquee selection. I'll hit Command J in hopes that it basically solves that problem. Um, what you don't want to do, there it is right there. Look, team, did you guys see that? Here, check it out again. Click and hold. This is not a, a magic show. Like literally, I'm just showing you some techniques. I've gone through this hundreds, if not thousands of times before. I've seen that. And I've seen it be the detriment of a lot of people where they just get discouraged because they don't know how to you know, make their tracks gel and make them sound perfect. So anyway, I digress, but I just really wanted to show you um, a quick workaround if that ever happened to you. Again, this, this is not just the Logic User Guide. This is the Logic User Guide and tutorial so we're gonna go ahead and play with the algorithms of this piano part we heard it with um what was it the complex algorithm let's listen one more time okay this time i'm gonna drag this into eight now it's a perfect integer right eight zero 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 it's beautiful stuff It sounds really nice to me. The fidelity sounds clean. Um, let's go ahead and check out percussive. Um, let me undo this. Let's listen to it. Okay, cool. And then one more time, edit. Uh, I should have this set up to key commands. All right, so here's percussive. Let's see if there's any audible difference. And this isn't the way that I want you to do it, just to be clear, whenever you're time stretching audio or trying to resample something, um, I want you to, to try out an algorithm and if it sounds good, keep it. The only time you should start switching this is if it doesn't sound good. Maybe you wanna change the feel, have it sound a bit more lo-fi. Um, that's the only reason. Otherwise, just leave it as is. Here's shift, play, play from selection. Like that one to me doesn't sound right. I'm hearing like some resonance and some bells and whistles. I don't like that one. Um, let's go ahead, bring this back to, let's try the Logic 5 <laughs> algorithm um, to all my Logic 5 users out there. Thank you for being here. All right, so the length now is eight. Uh, hold on right there, sweet. All right, let me know if you can hear any difference here.
I like the way it sounded. And so I'll try one more and see if we can find anything different here. Um, let's choose something that'll really make the sound different. Mm, I don't want to do any material. Rhythmic? Should we just go for that? Yeah, let's go for rhythmic. All right. So again, snap to grid is set to bar. As always, this is the heartbeat of the program. This is how it functions. This is how you can make the best use of it. I hover over the bottom of a region. The pointer tool converts to the length in tool. Hold option so that we're not resizing or, or changing the length, but we're actually literally compressing the file. And uh, we're going to, uh, hold on, let me, let's listen to this. Ooh, clicks and pops, right? That's just not going to work. Yeah, uh, I'm not going to do that. I am pretty sure that in most cases, the primary three algorithms are going to sound just nice. Let's try percussive one more time, and then we'll try universal, and then we'll call it a day with this section. So here we go. This is the percussive algorithm. Sounds pretty good. I am all for it. And then if we go into, uh, I'm sorry, edit time stretch, let's go with, let's go with complex. Uh, well, wait a minute. Complex was for entire tracks. Universal is probably the way to go. Okay. Okay. Here we go. I'm hovering option compress. Let's listen. Very cool. All right. So I hope you find some usage there. Um, I guess just for just for a quick uh, laugh, let's see what this sounds like. Okay, if I run this through the Logic 5 algorithm, I'm just really curious, I'm taking notes on all these various things. What would it sound like if we use this algorithm? So I'm at 24. Let's do 12. All right. So that's now halftime. Let's check it out. I didn't really hear any difference uh, in terms of just the quality. We're not listening to the part, by the way. 24. Can I bring this out to 48? Will it do it? Yeah, it will. Okay. So let me try and do half time. I meant double time earlier, by the way. All right, let's try this. Uh, one thing I hope it mentions right now when we get back into it, but if I change the, the algorithm like mid way through, will it, will it change the sound? Let's see. I don't know if I heard anything particularly different. Um, maybe your ears did. Let's try percussive. It sounds fairly similar. I'm going to go back to the default just before we transition here and we're going to go to universal. Okay. Sweet. Happy with this whole bit. Let's uh, keep it going. Let's go into splitting regions in the Logics Pro tracks area. This is Eddie Gray reading the user guide and tutorial. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll get right back into it. Welcome, welcome. You know, we like to take our little breaks here. You got to make sure you clear your headspace. 
you get a little bit of perspective on what you just heard and read. And, uh, and then, of course, if you're watching this alongside and doing all the exercises, then you want to make sure that you apply, apply, apply. All right. If you miss something, just press pause. Go back to it. Double check, triple check, and then get back in the game. All right. Let's talk about splitting regions, and then we'll wrap it up. Here we go. All right, my good friends, got the logic user guide and tutorial right in front of us here. We're splitting regions in the Logic Pro tracks area. Some of you may think you understand how to edit, how to cut, but I'm telling you, as soon as you read page 346 and 47, it'll blow your mind. All right, let's keep going. You can split a region in the tracks area and use the split segments of the region in different places in the tracks area. So we can chop up a general region and move it around within the tracks area. Can you use it on the same uh, audio or, or software uh, instrument track, or you can use it on a different one. Um, it all just depends. When you split a MIDI region, any notes that are split points are shortened to that point. So in other words, if the playhead chops off a MIDI note, it splits them and it shortens them to that point. If notes in a split MIDI region overlap other notes by more than a 16th note, a dialog appears asking you if you want to keep, shorten, or split the notes. You can also split regions by selecting part of the regions using the marquee stripe in the ruler. You can also split regions by selecting parts of the regions using the marquee stripe in the ruler. Hmm, that's a really interesting way of wording it. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to get, yeah, here it is right here. Okay, um, let's start with number one, splitting regions at the playhead position. So this is command T. You can also find this in the edit bar. So let's say I wanted to make an edit at bar, um, let's say 53. Okay, rather than having to go into the cursor tool, select the scissor tool, you don't have to do that. All you have to do is hit Command T, and literally you will get an edit there. Of course, you could select the scissor tool. I'm not telling you not to. I'm just saying this is just a much more efficient way of doing so. If I join the region again, you can see that it's been joined. Uh, if I go into Edit, and I go into, where is it, Trim? Uh, where is it, Cut? It's somewhere in here. I never use it this way. Uh, where are you? Edit split regions at playhead. Okay, so we're here. Edit split regions at playhead. You also have regions at locators, which we'll look at right after this. So that's one way to do it. Um, if I hit regions at locators, look at what happens here, my good friends. You can see that the cycle locators of bar 53 and 77, even though they're disabled, by using the key command, I think I had it set up as Control Option Command T. Uh, no, that it wasn't that. It was a was it Option Command T or no Control Option T? What was it? Mm. Ah, oh, there it is. Control Command T. All right, always troubleshoot, always keep going. Try and use your memory first. Try and pull the information and extract it from your brain. And then, of course, if you have a notebook right next to you, which you should, if you're really serious about this program, and uh, and then you can refer to the notes. But try and, you know, three, four, five times, and then you can get back to the notes. Okay, so um, when the cycle region is either enabled or not, if I hit Control-Command-T, you can see that it crops... Uh, within the locator. So that's a pretty sweet function as well. So we can split a playhead. We can split at the locators left and right. What else we got? That was here. Uh, we can split regions using the scissor tool. Uh, I don't think I need to go over that, but just in case, I will say one thing. If you are going to do some chopping, do me a big favor. Make sure that you use the snap to grid mode. It's the only way. I am telling you. When you adopt this, it will change your workflow forever. You will never, ever look back. Trust me. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to cut. I feel like we've gone over that a billion times. Uh, I just showed you splitting the regions at the locator positions. Very valuable. I'm actually going to uh, highlight this myself because I really like it. 
All selected regions located wholly or partly between the locators are cut at the left and right locator position. All right, you guys know my favorite right here. Look, my tips, the best of the best stuff is right here. You can achieve the same effect by defining a cycle with the pointer in the ruler while holding down command. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Defining a cycle with the pointer. Oh, here we go. While holding down command. Something new. I guarantee you the very first time this is, this is coming out. I, I'm, I'm so positive. Uh, this is the real deal. All right, I'm holding command. Come on, watch closely. I'm holding command. I'm dragging over to the right. And, uh, <laughs> well, something happened, but it's not what I expected. That's, uh, that's for a later date. Yeah, this is, again, not a magic show, I promise. Uh, uh, let me just try that one more time. Holding command. Nope, it, it, something else happened. Uh, I don't want to tell you about this until later, until we get there. So wait a minute. What What's the deal here? Are we going to ding this? Control click. Uh, wait, no, you can achieve the same effect by defining a cycle region, left and right locator, which I did with the pointer tool, which I did while holding. Okay, so you know what that means, guys. Nope, not that one. This one. All right, we just had to ding it simply because it's just not true. So this needs to be updated. You guys know at the end of this whole process, uh, we're going to send some requests to update this. Uh, it's going to be awesome. So, yeah, uh, again, I'll try one last time, but I'm in the ruler. I'm whole, I tried, uh, by the way, you know, in the lower half of the ruler to be clear because we got to do the best research we can. But really, this is another function which I want to tell you about later, okay? All right. So here we go. Split regions at the marquee selection. So not the locator position, but the marquee selection, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to open up the marquee ruler, which is the same thing as utilizing the command click tool. It's just a convenient way of locating it. Now, how do we do that? We go into view marquee ruler. Now, one of the things that I, you know, particularly don't appreciate about this manual um, that I'm, I'm looking forward to updating is that when we go into the instructions, it doesn't tell you where, right? So it says choose view. So most of us would probably go into the main menu bar. We go view and it's like, wait, is it here? See, I'm, and so it says show toolbar, but I don't see uh, mark, marquee ruler. So I'll look one more time, but because I already know this program, see, there's no marquee ruler. So again, I know this program I've spent a lot of time with it. Uh, we have a bond. Really, they're referring to this view tab in what's called the local main menu bar. But because they're not pointing this out, this could be rather challenging if you're going through the user guide. So, again, I thank you for being here so we can get clear together and we can study together. And we can really take it to the next level. So when we do get out of this whole situation that we're all in right now, we come out on top. We come out better than and ready to go. So if we go into view here, you can see that the marquee ruler is ready for selection. Since I have selected it, one thing happened. And I'm going to need to highlight this. I, let me see if I, yeah. Okay. So we have the top half of the ruler, which is the cycle locator, right? We also have the musical time division, but right below that, we have the ability to influence the playhead and its positioning and its playback. And, you know, if you're doing other things, um, uh, with the playhead, you could do it there. But look, right below that, there's something called the marquee ruler. Okay. And so this also is subject to the snap to grid functionality. And so then now I've essentially created an entire marquee selection by using the marquee ruler. Really, really fantastic feature. I want you to write that down inside of the local uh, menu bar inside of marquee ruler. And so then now I've created a selection. What else do they tell us here? Drag in the thin marquee stripe area. Okay, we did that. And then it says control click the marquee stripe, then choose split region events at locators or marquee selection. Okay, okay, so hold on. Split region events. Let's just start there. It's a lot of verbiage. All right, I'm looking for the word split. Split regions and marquee selection, key command, control, command T. Boom. Okay, 
So that's one way of creating a selection. Let's say you wanted to bounce this entire area, uh, area here, the one that's uh, in key focus, to audio, right? And then we'll mute the source. And so then when this part of the song comes in, as you can see here on track number two, I'm going to click and drag it all the way down to the bottom of the track header. I'll apply a quick filter or you know something to that effect. It doesn't have to be this. But then now we have this kind of transition. Check it out. Boom, B drops in right there. All right. So lots that you can do here. I just want you to have the, the skill set. I just want you to have the tools. That's it. All right. So that's a really nice feature. What else do you got for me? Page 348. Um hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, okay, wait, I think I skipped over this part. Oh, cool. Very cool. Uh, split split a region into portions of equal length. Actually, I may have skipped over. No, 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 we're on track. Okay, guys, bottom right. You guys should be seeing it right here on my screen. Really nice feature. You're going to love it, okay? This is uh, an opportunity to create edits, to create regions uh, with precision, but also of equal length. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to select the scissor tool, we're going to hold option, and then you can see that sequentially it starts to create equidistant edits. It's really nice. Uh, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so they give a quick example here to divide a 16-bar region into eight two-bar regions, cut the region at the start of bar three. So uh, let's look at this. And uh, I'm going to have to command Z or there you go, our Pablo Picasso-esque editing here. So let's um, let's look at, let's see, what would be a nice edit? I guess we'll do the piano. All right, I'm going to cut all the fact, control X. Uh, we'll lift the threshold, we'll play with the threshold so that we get a better edit here. Cool, that looks good to me. I'm going to hit OK. All right, and so then now um, I'm going to create an another cut at the end of this line at bar 21 how did i do that i'm holding command accessing my secondary tool which is the marquee in this case you can see that right here right marquee secondary tool and then i move over to the bottom right of the region right i'm doing some research how long is this oh here's that little trick again we might have to hack the system i hold Control and shift as I modify this selection. I'm going to check one more time and we're having the same exact issue that we had the last time around. If you remember how we fixed it, we uh, essentially bounced it to audio and we were able to... Um, oh, wait, we didn't do that. We created a marquee selection and then you can see that it's a perfect 16 bar integer. I hit command J. That then creates a non-contiguous audio region, just one file. All right. And then when I check my work again, you can see that I'm at perfect 16. So you could have bounced it to audio as well, but this seems to kind of solve it every time. Okay, so I'm good here, happy here, and we need to check out this, uh, this way of creating equidistant cuts. Now, again, I can hover all the way up here and change the scissor tool. You can also summon the tool menu by hitting T. So then now I'm going to hover in a little bit closer by using the trackpad. All right. I'm just using that pinch gesture. All right. The screen looks nice. Uh, let's do this by beats so it's really clear. I have this set up to my key commands. I have a great video on this, uh, speeding up your workflow on Logic Pro, resources for the modern creative. Consider subbing. So I'm selecting the snap to grid beat mode and I have the scissor tool, right? I'm accessing it. It's a primary tool right now. I hold option. All right. Now that I'm holding option, I'm accessing this unique feature where I can create equidistant cuts. And you can see that when I double clicked, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 equidistant cuts. Now, why would you want this? Well, if you're sampling, number one, this could be awesome. 
Number two, right, we can treat these differently if we move them to other tracks and we can process them, maybe have some panning action. There's a multiplicity of options available. I just need you to know the how and the when, okay? So then now let's check this out really quick. Now, I'm not saying this is going to work, but creatively speaking, I could, you know, theoretically move this over like this, right, and change up the order and see what that would sound like. Uh, that would have been way more efficient if I would have used shuffle, by the way, but the, that's for all my advanced people. But here we go. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. Right, so you can also play with the chord progression. Uh, that was a miss there, but you understand the idea. We could kind of change the overall progression. Let's say this was a G, and you wanted to move that over to the end of the progression. This is just another way of, you know, having a better handle at your Logic Pro Power User Experience. Very good. All right, uh, feeling good about that. And uh, we're going to get into handling overlapping MIDI notes the next time I see you. It's been a long week. We have been really crushing it with this entire thing. Um, I hope you're enjoying the content. Looks like we're going to be editing MIDI as well, joining regions, looking at the glue tool a little bit closer. Uh, let's see here. Genuine mix downs with clip scan. <laughs> wow. I don't even know what clip scan is. So looks like there's a digital clipping scan. So we'll get into that pretty soon. You got to love it. Uh, looks like we get clear on what normalizing is. I know there's a lot of controversy about the good, the bad, the ugly. So we'll talk about normalizing audio. Finally, we'll get into creating MIDI aliases. Uh, we know that this work and there's still the pending question of what clones do within audio. We tested it out last time and really got no results. So that's something else that we get into in page 355. Lots of questions will be answered. Lots of great content com coming right at you guys. So thank you very much for the opportunity to be here. Um, I've saved the page, saved the date. This Monday, we are back at it again. Wanted to thank you for this time together. This is Eddie Gray signing off. Just wishing you the best Saturday and Sunday night. Enjoy your weekend. Go ahead and share the content. It's all we ask, right? This is the way that we want to give back to you. And so all we ask is that you go ahead and just share the content. Maybe you have a cousin, a brother, a friend that just tuned in and they want to make music and they want to be next level. I certainly can help them in that direction. I can steer them in the right direction. There's a lot of content out there. There's a lot of trash out there. Just want to make sure that we put them on the fast lane. Thank you guys very much for entrusting in me. I'm going to keep bringing it week in, week out. I'll catch you guys on Monday. Until then, keep growing, keep evolving, just keep pushing, right? This is your life. I want you to get what you need to get, and I'm happy to be a part of your story. Let's go. Mm -hmm.